delighted to be here today at Sunny Plumpton for the Star Sports video blogs for the Cheltenham Festival 2013 and I'm very much in esteemed company. I'm joined by three men that need no introduction but I'm going to do it anyway. To my left we've got Claude Duval, the punter's pal from The Sun, Tom Lee, Channel 4, the betting expert and Bill Esdale, the City AM racing editor. So thanks very much for joining me gents and let's just crack on. Friday afternoon then, gents, the main event, the Gold Cup, uh, the reason we're all there. Um, <laughs> hopefully we've got enough money in our pockets not to have to worry about it by this stage. Um, cracking little event. Some of the greats from years gone by have gone, uh, but there's some new champions joining the mist. Uh, Bobsworth heads the market of 3-1. to one. Horses for courses, it loves Cheltenham. Won there three, four times. Um, difficult to sit and tip up a 3-1 to one favourite in such a strong field, but I think if you had the proverbial bullet to your head, this is the only one I could go with. Claude? Yes, I'd agree with you. Uh, five horses that won the Hennessy and then gone on and won the Gold Cup. And he will, in fact, um, gallop into the record books because this would be his third win at the Cheltenham Festival in three different races, which has only ever once been done before, and that was by the one and only uh, Flying Bolt, probably before you were born, uh, Luke. But uh, say that, Claude. Give, give or take 20 years. The way he won the <laughs> Hennessy, I thought it was spectacular. I thought it was a character from Harry Potter. No, no, no. <laughs> um, the way he won the Hennessy, very impressive. Tidal Bay, he beat, went past him, and uh, you know he was a very, very convincing winner. Tidal Bay then went to Ireland. Sadly, he's, uh, I know he won the Lexus. Sadly, he's injured, so he won't be there. Um, long run, I, I, I don't, I'm not too sure he's as sparkling as he was, although it wouldn't surprise me at all if uh, he did a quarto star and his regained... His teeth will be shiny on the day, they won't Yes, they will be. Regained his, uh, regained his crown. Uh, the giant bolster, I couldn't have him, I'm afraid. Captain Chris, um, well, I wouldn't have him. Imperial Commander, now he's an interesting horse. I was went down there to see Nigel Tristan Davis the other day, and he's adamant that this horse is back just as good as he was, you know, when he won the uh, when he won the gold cup and before uh, breaking a splint bone. But you have to say the last horse, twelve years old, to win the uh, gold cup was what a with myth way back in 1969. He's, he's probably asking a lot. Uh, Silviano Vim Conti. I'm slightly worried that he's never run over fences at Cheltenham. I know he did run in a hurdle race. It's I think it's a pretty wide open race. I have to say so. I'm probably being extremely boring. Um, by tipping the favourite, but I do think that Bobsworth, uh, and he'll get a he'll get a particularly good ride, uh, I think, from uh, your friend Mr. Garrity. What price do you envision going off then, Tom? Do you see Bobsworth going off short price rate for the Gold Cup? I think the only problem with that is that he hasn't seen the track for 104 days. You know, they've been un unable to get a prep race into him, and outstanding though his credentials are, what I suppose will guide us is, you know, how Henderson string as we go into day four of the meeting. So. You know, if he's if he's absolutely gasping for oxygen, and he's not had a winner. You know, potentially Bobsworth might not be a three to one shot. He might he, he might he might be a nine to two shot. Equally, if Henderson's had half a dozen winners and they're absolutely on cloud nine, please God, take God. <laughs> so, so yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see about that. I mean, something Luke, something you said interestingly in, in in your introduction there. You've got the new kids on the block, but you've got a couple of old ones, as Claude mentioned. I mean, you've got Long Run, very capable on his day. Uh, you know, he, he is a solid proposition, despite <coughs> what a lot of the snipers say. And of course, old Imperial Commander, who, Twiston, bless him, was, you know, talking him up recently at his, at his media day and sort of saying, look, he, he looks as good as ever, despite the fact he's 12 years of age. So it'd be a great story if he could run into the, into the frame. Uh, of the other principals, well, Salviniaco Conti, uh, he's very tough. He's solid. Uh, he was very, very good when he won the, uh, the race at Haydock there in November. Uh, that was good, he jumped particularly well that day. But the one thing that sticks in my mind, above and beyond any other, and I know you can say he's been beaten twice this year, but he did win last time out, is a horse, Sir Deschamps of Willie Mullins. And what I really like, and the thing that really, really is just at the forefront of my thinking about this race, the way he sprinted up the hill when he hit the rising ground in the Deucen last year. Uh, he won last time out in the Hennessy. Yeah, all right, he didn't win the Lexus, but I mean, that was, for anyone who saw it, it was just an extraordinary horse race. And if you and, a line, it's and if you and if you ran it a hundred times again, you know you might get you know twenty five times four different results. So therefore, look, I don't think you can read too much into that. He's in form. He loves Cheltenham, and he loves that hill. So for that reason, I think he might be a hint of value. Well, thankfully, we have been joined by the head of the Captain Chris Fan Club, 
He runs the blog, the website. <laughs> Volunteered to muck him out in the morning, but they said, go away, you've not got a clue what you're doing. So come on, Bill. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Captain Chris himself. Captain Chris, I think, is the forgotten horse in the race. I think he has... Lots of people say, this horse can't handle Cheltenham. And he's an ARCA winner, so he can handle Cheltenham. He's jumping straighter this season, and better this season. Yes, if the Gold Cup was right-handed, he would be a strong selection. Um, I think he can go left-handed. I think he ran a cracker at Kempton. Um, I think that he would have gone very close to beating Q Card last time if he hadn't clouted the, the, the last or second last. Um, he's just a, an each-way play at the prices because he's bound to be there or thereabouts. Whether he's good enough to win, I don't know, but at 20 to 1 each way, he's a fair each-way each bet. Looking at the others, Bobsworth, hugely impressive. Like Tom says, it's a worry they haven't got a run into him. Henderson says it's a, not a worry, but I remember last year, head of the RSA chase, he said it was fantastic we got a run into him at Ascot because it took the cobwebbers away. Mm -hmm. So that's a worry I have. So Deshaun, uh, just for me, he hasn't jumped brilliantly this season. I know he's better last time, but I, I don't like a horse that starts making mistakes in races and gets out of a rhythm. He doesn't seem to be travelling as well over this trip as he was over two miles five last year. And I think if you get out of a rhythm at Cheltenham, it's incredibly difficult to get back into a rhythm. So I, I, I would overlook him. Claude mentioned about Silvanarco Conti. The concern with him is he's always avoided Cheltenham and he's now suddenly back at Cheltenham for the first time over fences. He's done nothing wrong this season. I think Ruby Walsh will have a pretty good idea when he sits on this horse um, of where he is in the pecking order because obviously having sat on Tidal Bay, he'll know that he's probably got the beating of those that ran in the Lexus. But there's a doubt over him. First Lieutenant would be hugely interesting if he run, but I think he'll run the Ryanair. Um, really difficult. The one other horse I just wanted to mention is Katenko. Course. Yeah, you won't that see. Soft ground, it'll love that. Power if it comes up soft on the day, Katenko is a massive player at around twenty-five to one. I haven't seen a horse jump as well as he's jumped this season. When he won at Sandown, when he won at Cheltenham, he is hugely, hugely progressive. It might not be this year that he's a Gold Cup contender. It might be in the future, but he is hugely progressive, and Katenko is interesting. But for me, Captain Chris each way is the bet. Okay, so selection time. I, I think it is worth mentioning. I think the, the tactics on long run will be different this time. I think it will go from the front, or at least try to. And that'll give the horse a much better chance. But um, boring as it may seem, I love horses that have won round Cheltenham, that continue to win round Cheltenham. And for that reason, my selection for the Super 8 competition will be Bobsworth. Uh, and I'd like to go on record to say that I don't think Captain Chris will be in the first five. But, uh, Claude? Uh, I, I agree with you. I think Bobsworth um, <clears throat> has got so much going for him. And as you rightly say, horses for courses. Uh, you know, he's home and hosed almost. Agreed. Uh, I also love horses that have won round Cheltenham, so for that reason, a, a couple of points bigger, you have to be with Sir Deschamps. Wouldn't put you off, agree, yeah. And I also like horses that have won round <laughs> Cheltenham, and I'm going to go 10 or 12 or 14 points bigger and go with Captain Chris. Okay, so in conclusion, the, the, the market for the big one, the, the Gold Cup, Bobsworth heads the market 3 to 1 favourite, Sir Deschamps 4 to 1, the impeccable Silvignaco Conti at 5 to 1, long run, can he return and win it again 6 to 1, first lieutenant 12s and bigger the rest.